The origins of like where Hungary came from aren't really clear. According to their legend, the first Hungarian, his name was Hunor, and he followed a magic deer. Um, he was out hunting and he followed this magic deer with his brother, I think. And then they just kept following the deer and eventually were so far away that they couldn't find home anymore. So they settled down right where they were and that was Hungary. And so then they met someone and had families and that from there they formed Hungary. And then when Hungary became Christian, that's when they stopped being more like the Mongols and more Christian like the rest of Europe. So they had a king and they fought a lot of wars between who was going to be the king. And then after World War I, a lot of their land was divided up because they were the Austro-Hungarian Empire. They were really big for a long time. And then they still will tell you all the time about Big Hungary or Nagy Magyarország. They're just still upset that they had all this land. They were in control of so much and now they're much smaller than they used to be. And then communism came in and the Soviets came in and took them over. And so everyone will tell you like, oh yeah, I learned Russian when I was a kid, but I don't know anything because they just didn't want to be Russian. They didn't want to speak Russian, so they don't know it. And they speak Hungarian with a lot of pride, but a lot of the youth do learn English. Anyways, the communists came in, took over, and things were pretty, pretty rough for a lot of people. Some people it was better, some people it was worse, but there were a lot of hard times and people were scared a lot. And then they revolted in 1956, and that was when they took back more their own power and it still took a while before they were really free the Soviets and free they actually had three revolutions in total before they were their own independent country now they have um, a prime minister or a president you could say and they live a lot more free but it's still there's a lot of traditions that are hard for them to break or things that the older people just still remember because it was only like 60 years ago. So I love Hungarian food, but it's completely different than most things we eat here. There's a lot of stews, there's a lot of uh, meats, they eat a lot of paprika. My favorite food is probably dumoulchlevesh, which is fruit soup. I just always liked when I got that, especially because it was really hot outside and you'd get this cold soup and oh, it was so sweet. It was, or not that sweet, but it was really good. And then I really enjoyed stuffed peppers and of course the pig shake or the bakery on every corner is my favorite because I love bread. And <laughs> just like pogachas were the best thing in the world. I did have pig's tongue. Uh, not me, but a lot of my friends tried cotonia or pig fat jello, which I avoided. I had uh, fish soup, which I really liked. I had chicken hearts. So one of my friends and I were out in this like little village and we were looking at the, this old castle and we thought it'd be really cool to go just check it out. We had a few extra minutes before the bus came and we went inside and it was this really old, just big castle like you'd see in the movie, like you'd see an old school or something like that. That was the feel of it, kind of like Narnia. And we went in there and we're walking around and then we started to feel like maybe this isn't the most secure building in the world. It was in a village called Haimashkir. And then we went outside and that's when we saw the sign that said, very dangerous, don't enter. And so we'd been climbing around in this castle that really could have collapsed on us at any moment. There were some interesting encounters with people where you never knew what someone was gonna say. And there were people from all over that I met, like I met people from Greece, I met people from the Middle East, I met people from Africa, and they were all just there. A lot of them were in school or stuff like that. The Hungarians, uh, something I really love about them is just how how like strong they are. They've been through a lot. The Hungarian history is not easy. They were pretty much always fighting. They were always almost on the wrong side of the winners a lot of times, but and even through it, they still hold on to this Hungarian spirit and they're all just so open and but as soon as you get into their heart, they just love you so much and they just want you to, they just want to love you and they want to bring you into their family and into their home, which is something I really love and they're always, anytime you go over, they'll feed you or they'll, they'll talk to you about just their lives and how, how excited they are to meet you and to meet someone who's different and just... They just love with so much of their hearts. The culture is pretty similar to here in the US, honestly. Their working schedule is a lot different than ours. It's not quite as nine to five set hours as it is here. A lot of people work on a rotating schedule of three weeks. So they'll work morning shift, day shift, or night shift, depending on the week. 
a lot of people live with their families or they live alone in small apartments and there's a lot of remnants of like communism and stuff like that where the the 10 story apartment buildings were built by the communists and they're they're usually painted bright colors now so that they can make that memory better they really love to celebrate when they have holidays that's a big deal like everything's closed nothing is open at all and like easter is a huge deal it's like three days long and then they do this thing called Locholni, Locholkodi, oh, I can't remember, where they basically like water the girls. And so it's like every year the boys will read a poem to the girls and then sprinkle them with water or perfume or squirt them with a lot of water. And then the girl has to give them a hand painted red egg in return, almost as a thank you. And they do it, it's almost like trick or treating in the US. And so but they love celebrating and so they'll do a lot of fireworks, family get-togethers, they do a lot of big family meals. Christmas is like three days long too. They celebrate Christmas Eve and then Christmas and then the day after Christmas is still a holiday and it's like each day they see more and more family and friends. I really enjoyed being there for the holidays and going to Christmas markets and stuff like that a lot. I think some of the differences between living in the US versus living in Hungary is just the people are a lot different well, not really that different, but they're different in how they just, how they spend their time. A lot of times they're either not home or they're at home with their families. They don't, they don't go out on the weekends or stuff as much as we do. And they, they always have fresh bread and they're always, they're always with their families when they have time to be with their families. But a lot of people do live alone because it's just, it just ended up that way where a lot of people live alone in their apartments and they go to work and they see their families sometimes. Uh, whereas I feel like a lot of people here in the U.S. spend a lot of times with a lot of time with lots of friends or whatever, but it's pretty common to just live with your family or live with roommates instead of living on your own. Their transportation depends on where you're at. If you're out in like one of the little villages, then it's pretty much bikes or cars. But if you're in the cities, then there's definitely public transportation. We took, I think, in all of the cities I lived in, um, we always took the bus because it was the fastest way to get anywhere. When I lived in Budapest, we took the subway or the metro and we took the Vilamos or the streetcars a lot just because it was the easiest way to get from point A to point B once you figured out how to work it. The weather is pretty similar to Utah. In the summer it's hot and in the winter it's cold, but it's a lot more humid. So if it says 10% chance of rain, it's gonna rain at some point during the day. I know in August they have like pop-up thunderstorms where it's completely sunny outside, 90 degrees, all of a sudden thunderstorm rolls in out of nowhere, 20 minutes it's pouring rain and then it's completely dry. And I was always, it only rained when I stepped outside my apartment door. We'd go outside and it would pour rain until we got inside and then it would stop. And so then we're soaking wet and everyone else is like, what are you doing? Like what's wrong with you? Why are you so wet? Because it would just randomly pop up and rain in the middle of a 90 degree day. So it's pretty much like Utah weather but with humidity. My experience learning Hungarian, well <laughs> it was hard. It's really hard anytime you learn a new language. A Hungarian is special. There's like 44 cases and there's more than that. There's like 44 letters but they use technically a Latin alphabet, so it's really confusing for the first little while until you learn how to read it. It is phonetic. It took probably about like six months before I could really understand things. Or I could speak, but I couldn't do both at the same time. So, and my sentences had really bad grammar and a lot of people didn't understand me. My accent, I was told on like the last day I lived there after a year and a half that my accent was terrible. <laughs> because you just never really get the Hungarian accent down from America, very few people do. It's a lot of very specific words, a lot of specific sounds. It just sounds completely different than English. It took a really long time, probably by around, around like nine months or ten months. I really understood what was going on most of the time, but sometimes you'd still come out and we'd go with a Hungarian to meet with someone and one time this Hungarian lady turns to me and she says, do you understand what that man was saying? And I was like, no. And I'd been there for about 17 months at that point and my companion was newer than I was and she had no idea what was going on. And our friend just went, I didn't either, it's okay. <laughs> he didn't say anything important. <laughs> and so we just were like, okay. So Hungarian's hard, but it was worth it. It's a beautiful language and it's fun to speak now with my friends. I think some of my favorite things in Hungary, like besides the people, were just how beautiful everything was, how everything was painted, bright colors. I lived in Pech, which is gorgeous and you can see all the colors around, you see all the architecture and in Budapest where 
you can go to the Noach Piazza or you can go to any like Vashar and, and see the Hungarian history with the embroidery and you can see it in the nativities, you can see it in, in everywhere where you can see their culture and parliament. And my favorite place in Hungary is by Margitsiget where you can see out across the Duna, you can see the chain bridge and parliament and Fisherman's Bastion on the other side of the Duna and it's just so, so beautiful. I think the biggest culture shock was the food. It did not agree with my stomach for a while. And then coming back to America, American food did not agree with my stomach. And it just, it surprised me how different the food really was and how different, really just how different they lived compared to us. So I just wanna say to the people of Hungary that I'm so grateful I got to come live with you guys and that you t took me in and that I could be friends with so many of you still because you're all fantastic people and you've been through a lot and I admire you guys so much for how hard you work and how much you put into each and every day. Mennyire junior a Magyarország is, mennyire junior a Akvacstok, hogy kedvesek és, és édesek, és nagyon, nagyon szeretlek a Magyarországot.